Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Devin Lavore. <laughs> and in my previous video, I started talking about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that. And so in this particular video, I wanted to address the differences between the two, the filling of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to do that by, ad by addressing the top five things I hear from those who don't speak in tongues about what it's like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, what's the difference? Hey, that is a good question. So, let's get into some of the differences. Let's look at this scripture first, okay? Okay, so now notice there, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And they did. They received the Holy Spirit. Kind of like you, when you don't speak in tongues, you have the Holy Spirit. That was their born again experience. That was the, that was the apostles. They were the first born again receiving of the Holy Spirit uh, people. <laughs> and now notice also in that scripture, Jesus said, I'm sending you out as my representatives, therefore receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now let's look at another scripture. Okay, now notice there, Jesus is saying, hey, I'm going to send you the promise of my Father, but wait for it. Now this is important to note because Jesus said this. Now this is in Luke and you know, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are called the gospels. They're all one story of one guy. It's not four separate stories of four different Jesuses, obviously. And so when you put all the chronology together, him saying that to the disciples in the Luke 24, 49, he said that after he breathed on them and told them, uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, which they did. Now let's look. Let's look at one more scripture. Acts chapter one, verse eight. He says, "You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you." Now, there's a couple questions here. First off, backtracking, why would Jesus breathe on them and give them the Holy Spirit and then tell them to wait for the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Okay, I said that last scripture was going to be the last scripture. It's not. This is actually the last scripture. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, now notice the Holy Spirit comes and if you notice every single person had a tongue of fire over their head it wasn't like some spoken tongues and some didn't everybody did so there's two things that we can draw from all these scriptures first of all there is a distinct difference set apart by jesus himself not your pastor your preacher me or the religion or the denomination or your upbringing and what your upbringing has taught you, Jesus clearly shows there's two different kinds of manifestations of the Holy Spirit. One guy, uh, he gave a great example, and I don't know where, I, I wish I could uh, credit who showed me this, but he said this, he's like, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, your born again experience, is like you being a cup of water and then the Holy Spirit is like a pitcher of water and he pours into you. Bam! You've got the Holy Spirit. That's when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, right? But then the baptism is taking that cup of water and chucking it into the ocean. <laughs> 
pretty big difference, right? Because the water comes from the ocean anyway. It's the same source. It's the same Holy Spirit that's in you, but he's got to be on you. And why did Jesus say to wait? Because he said it's not enough for you to battle the spiritual battle that you're going to have to deal with if you just have the Holy Spirit in you. You're like being born again. You're a naked baby. You don't need to be naked. You need to be clothed with the power from on high, not just have it inside of you. Yes, I know this was a long explanation, but it really is the, the whole point of this, of this video to try to explain like there is a difference between the infilling and the baptism. I hope this helps. But you need an interpreter, right? Oh yes, yes, the interpreter question. Well, when you're by yourself praying in tongues, praying in spirit with God in your own little prayer time, um, do you need an interpreter? No. What that scripture is talking about is if you're going to get up in front of the church to edify the church and you start speaking in tongues, no one's going to know what you're talking about. So it's like, then you need an interpreter. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I thought speaking in tongues died with the apostles. Okay, uh, I've heard that one before too, but then my question is, did miracles die out with the apostles? Did faith, gifts of prophecy, wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, did that die out with the apostles? So not everybody has to speak in tongues, right? Well, I kind of covered this one in the Acts chapter 2 verses 3 thing where I said that all the tongues of fire were on all 120 who were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And that is a tough one to answer, honestly, but I think the biblical precedent is set up that if you speak in tongues, oh, that's the evidence that you're baptized in the Spirit. I have, man, I have been through so many different Christian circles that try to explain the speaking in tongues away as evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it biblically. You can't. And of course, every denomination tries to back up their denomination, their denomination's ideas with the Bible. But when you're looking at it, if you're just, if your heart is for the truth and you're really seeking it out, you can't. You can't. I mean, I think, I think there can be instances, absolutely instances where people are clearly operating in the power of God, but they don't speak in tongues. Um, but those are, yeah, oh man, those are like the super small exceptions to the rule, N not the rule. So I love Jesus and I have the Holy Spirit. Why don't I speak in tongues? Well, I'm not doubting that you love Jesus and that you have the Holy Spirit, particularly if you're born again. If you're born again, you do have the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. There's two different things. Um, not only that, but you might be raised in a culture that doesn't teach you that or the, a culture that kind of shies away from that kind of thing, you know. So that might be the reason why. You've got to know there is so much more to the Holy Spirit than just speaking in tongues. It's his, it's his desire to clothe you so that you can be prepared to impact the world with more than just apologetics. Okay? Because, I mean, that's a lot of times that's what non baptized people end up falling into is an apologetic arena and they just trying to debate and debate and debate and there's no power. See, Jesus said, you will receive power to be my witnesses. If you don't have the power, then how are you going to be his witness? You know, you're, you're not. I mean, you're going to say some stuff and all that, but you're not going to be able to say it in power. And to throw this in there, the enemy's going to be sitting back going, you can't touch me. You ain't got the power. See, because he knows and God knows. And all you're trying to debate and convince or whatever with other human beings means nothing in the spirit realm means about that much in the spirit realm so you need to be clothed with the power from god if you're going to be affected if that's what you're trying to do if you want to be just a church goer and you want to live comfortable and you're just, that's fine you don't need the holy spirit for that you don't even need to be born again for that so but man you just got to know it is god's will for you to be clothed with the power and for you to go out and minister the gospel in power. Hey, bless you guys. 
and until next video I hope I gave you something to chew on and I will see you again subscribe or subscribe <laughs>